Hello everyone and welcome to my Atrox guide. This guide will teach you what you need to know to be ready for rank with Atrox. Alright, let's get into it. First we're going to talk about the runes. On Atrox what you want to have is you want to start with Conqueror, second you want to go Triumph. These are just the standard two runes you always take no matter what. Afterwards you're going to pick either Legend Tenacity or Legend Alacrity. Now personally I generally go Alacrity because it feels better, it makes your animation smoother and it feels nicer to play with. However, Legend Tenacity is the better rune to take, so if you're just thinking about performance and you want to be the best you can, then you should go Tenacity. But it does feel a little bit worse because your attack speed is going to be slower. In the last one, you'll always take Last Stand because you're constantly fighting enemies, and you want to abuse Last Stand, and it's really good when you're fighting enemies because you're going to go low on health, you're going to heal up as Aatrox, and during that time, you'll be doing a ton of damage by utilizing Last Stand and the power of it. Now, let's get into the second tree on Aatrox, and this tree is much more interesting because there's so many different options. Now the most popular one would be going Domination and taking Taste of Blood with Ravenous Hunter because again Aatrox is a healing monster. These two runes are going to amplify your healing and as a healing monster once you get enough healing, healing becomes an overpowered stat because the enemies can't kill you. So if you can hit that threshold, it's going to be the best option at all times. Now if you can't hit the threshold where you're going to start healing too much so they can't kill you, then it's not really that useful anymore. And then the other thing you can go for is Resolve, where you can go Second Wind or Bone Plating combined with Revitalize to really amp up that healing again with Revitalize, right? Second Wind you want to use against Poking Champions, that's going to poke you all the time. But you're probably also going to get ganged and you have to play much more careful. And Bone Plating you want to use when you know the traits are just going to be about free hits, so you can utilize the Bone Plating, they're not going to happen all the time. But then they do happen, it's really important you win. And Bone Plating amplifies that. It's just important that they can't poke it out. Alright, now let's get into the small runes. So the small runes are pretty interesting. Normally, I always go attack speed because it feels nicer. However, again, straight up AD is better in the first one. Second one, you're going to want to go AD as well because it's the best one. Atrix uses a lot of abilities and his abilities get amplified by having more attack damage, which in turn is just going to be better for him. And then the last one, you want to go armor or magic resist depending on what you're against. If you're against a Jace top, well, let's get a little bit of armor. But if you're against a Cannon top, well, maybe you want to go magic resist. And if you're against a Rise, well, you definitely want to go magic resist, right? It's pretty straightforward and I know you guys will figure that one out. Alright, it's time to get into the item build on Aatrox. To start with a starting item, you want to start with a health potion and then you go either Dawn's Shield or Dawn's Blade. You opt in for Dawn's Blade whenever you have an easier lane where you're always going to win it and you can constantly use the lifesteal on Dawn's Blade, the 3%, to heal you up a little bit here and there all the time and then slowly you just dwindle the enemy down and you win the lane by that. Dawn's Blade gives you an opportunity to have more kill pressure because it gives you a little bit extra damage. So it's good for that case. Now Dawn's Shield on the other hand is better for harder laning phases but you don't necessarily win the lane by default. Sometimes you might lose. If a jungle ganks, you're going to be screwed a little bit. Then you can heal up with a Dawn's Shield and you sit passive and heal the abilities as well if the enemy goes too far up. And once you don't have to worry about the jungle so much anymore, then you can start playing aggressive again once you heal up from the dawn Shield and you're going to be good to go. Alright, let's talk about your first base. So on your first base, you want to try and get a Caulfield's Warhammer. The reason for that is because cooldown is absolutely essential on Aatrox and generally you win all lanes. So Caulfield's Warhammer is better than Kindergame because it gives you more damage and having more damage gives you higher kill pressure on the opponent, which is what you want when you have a winning lane. Now you can also go Kindergame if you're losing your lane and you want to be more survival focused, which is something you can do, but then you picked Aatrox wrong or you're already in a bad situation. After you get the first one, you're going to opt in for the second one. So if you've got Cold Fields, you're going to go Kindergame second. If you've got the Kindergame, you're going to go Cold Fields. And then later on, you're going to upgrade it into a Black Cleaver. Now once you have your Black Cleaver, you're generally going to focus on two different things. Either you're going to upgrade your boots, whether it be Ninja Tabais or Mercury Dreads, or you're going to skip that and just go straight for a Death Dance. If you can skip it and go straight for a Death Dance and you don't need the movement speed, then that is the best option because once you get your Death Dance power spike, you're going to be an absolute monster in the Rift and you want to try and team fight as much as possible once you have that item. You can still split push, you can do whatever you want, but once you have that item, you become a powerhouse and you can run through enemies and absolutely demolish people. And now you have what could be considered the core build of Aatrox and after that, you might go for Kindergame to get 40% cooldown. Once you have 40% cooldown, Aatrox scales really well with that. And then after that, you might go for Asterix Gates to upgrade it in. Once you have Asterix Gates again, you're going to be even stronger and it's a massive pass back, especially for Bruces right now. Bruces generally tend to be weaker early game, and then once they get the third item power spike, they become absolutely monsters because it's so much healing and all the items scale so well with its own. If they can't kill you quickly, well, you're going to heal back up with a death dance. And if they do kill you quickly, they have to go through death dance and over damage you and do too much damage to you, which means a lot of the damage is meaningless. And they have to go straight through a Sterix Gate shield, which is a lot of tankiness, right? Then after these two items, you generally want to go for either a Guardian Angel, in case you think you're going to get bursted down. Well, let's say against an Annie or a Syndra. Oof, 
pretty scary, right? They might one-shot you. Guardian Angel is pretty good for that, and it gives you the opportunity to buy a stopwatch. And you know what? Stopwatch is one of the most broken items in the game. However, let's say you're against a Seraph and a lot of other Poking Champions. Well, maybe you want to go for a Spirit Recess because it gives you more healing, and healing is good against Poke, right? So it all depends what you're against. First, well, opt in for Guardian Angel. Damage over time and kind of poke here and there, you know what? Go for the Spirit Recess. Alright, let's get into Atrix abilities. We're gonna start with the passive, of course. The passive charges up your sword to make a super hit, and when you hit with that sword, it does extra damage based on the enemy's max health, and it also heals you a little bit. So this ability is extremely important. If you can charge it up, wait for the opponent to walk forward, and then slap him with it, it's massive. And it's gonna win you most of your trades, so it's really important you play around your passive. Next up, we have Atrix's Q ability. He makes a massive animation in front of him, and then he slams down the ground. If they're standing at the edge of it, they're gonna get knocked up and take a lot of damage. If they're not standing at the edge of it, and they're maybe inside of it, they're taking a slightly little bit less damage and not getting knocked up. So you wanna try and hit on the sweet spot, and if you can do that, you will win most of your trades again. Also, one thing that's really important is every time you use it, it amplifies up. So the second hit is gonna be stronger than the first one, and the third one's gonna be stronger than the second one. So it gets stronger and stronger. Next up, we have Atrix's W. You throw a chain in front of you, if you hit the enemy, they're taking physical damage and they're slow by 25% for one and a half second. After one and a half second, they get thrown back into the starting position of the W if they don't manage to get out of the massive area that it creates. And this is an ability that's perfect to combine with the Q, because if you can combine the two, it becomes much easier to hit the sweet spot of the Q and absolutely demolish the enemy champions. Next up, we have Atrix's E ability. Umbral Dash. This ability is very interesting because they have a lot of small things to it. First, it heals you when you hit the enemies and do damage to them as a pass. Now second, the active is you can dash to any direction you want, and this is very good to combine with your Q to actually hit your Qs if you're not going to hit them. Let's say you're playing as a Shen, he dashes away from you. You know what? You dash after him and then you hit your Q and then you chunk him down again. It's free damage, right? Because you can now reposition yourself. You can also use it to escape ganks and a lot of other things. Now another small thing that's actually very important with Atrix E is it and auto attack animation cancel. So if you use your E, you actually reset your auto attack and you can attack faster by doing so. Which means you can combine an auto attack into an E, into another auto attack and then a Q. And you can do more damage by utilizing this to the optimal performance. Last but not least, we have Atrix's ultimate. This ability is monstrous and you've seen it in game. I know we all have. Now when Atrix uses his ultimate, he grows in size, he becomes bigger, he gets more damage, 20 to 30% depending on level. He also gets increased healing, 50 to 70%. And he gets movement speed, which is 60 to 100%, which is slowly decaying over time. This ability is absolutely monstrous, and this is the ability you use when you're going to try and kill people. Now, one thing that's very important to note about this ability is, when you use it, you fear all minions near you, which means if you're fighting inside of a massive minion wave, you don't have to be worried about that anymore, because they're not going to be hitting you, because they're feared. This is really important, because most champs can't trade in big minion waves, but Aatrox, the Darkened Blade, doesn't really care, you know? It is called the World Ender, and well, that's mostly what it does for people. It kills people. Once you use it, it's extremely scary. But you want to try and use it with care and not waste it because you should be trying to get a kill or survive a gank when using this ability. You can't just waste it. Next up, let's talk about how to skill Aatrox and which skills do you go first. So on Aatrox, you want to start off with a Q. And then you're going to go E level 2 generally. And afterwards, you're going to go W. The reason for that is because your Q is your main damaging ability. Your E can reposition so you can hit your Q better. And you can also escape a gank if you get a little free gank by the enemy jungler. You're still going to be low 2 at that time. And then last, you're going to go W, which is your third ability. And the W is amazing once you have the other 2, because then you can reposition with the an E. And then once you hit your W, you can get the third Q on them all the time. So it's much easier to land your abilities on them. Now, for the way you max the abilities, you're going to max Q first. And then you're going to max E second. The reason for that is because once you're level 13, you can use your E twice sometimes within your Qs. So it's really important that you get a lot of cooldown. And it's also important that you... Max your E second because it just increases your mobility, and that's definitely the best skill order for Atrix. 